It's a beautiful morning here in Alpharetta, Georgia. We're happy to have you joining us for the SPL Finch. I've got Anatoly here with me on the desk, and we're moving into a big day of SPL action. In fact, we're starting off with some heavy hitters here with Splice up against Dig. It's going to be that world's rematch up in the quarterfinals, uh, and this is going to be important for Splice to get footing under themselves because now they finally have Divios against the set with Rival. They were playing with Solar Patrol, but now they're full rosters here. That's right. So Splice should be at essentially full strength. Maybe they'll want, you know, a little bit more time to get to work with them with everyone here and playing, you know, together. But I would imagine at this point they're going to be pretty close to that final project product, which means that we're going to be having a very, very interesting set between these two teams. Let's take a look at the standings as well so we can see where every, every team's already shaken up. Splice, like you said, took that one loss already. So they're having some struggles. The other side, though, Dignitas have had no struggles, 4-0, and oh, and looking like just the best team out there. And yesterday, finding their victory over Pittsburgh Knights was very impressive. Another impressive set that they found was that five-game set up against Rival, and then right. finding two more victories against Space Station Gaming and Luminosity. Dignitas at the top, still undefeated. But this is going to be a difficult challenge for them as well because the last time that these two teams faced off, Splice had the upper hand. That's right. They came out looking like the better. It was a 3-0, but about as close as a 3-0 could ever possibly be. So take that with a grain of salt. But the matchup in particular, I think that there's no way that we could ignore, right, is Divios and Variety yes. there in the solo lane. That matchup is two of just our best going head-to-head. -head. And is Divios, you know, warmed up? Is he caught up with the team? How much have they been able to prep? All that stuff we're about to see now in action. I wouldn't be surprised if immediately off the gate, Divios is pulling something we haven't seen yet, whether it's right. going to be like a Cerberus in the solo lane or something a little bit more spicy. He's always the innovator in the solo lane ever since back in his... Cog Red days, transitioning into TSM, he's always been really flexing the capabilities of that soul lane. He doesn't just outplay you, he also out-rotates you. He communicates with his teammates very effectively of the opponent's intentions. And I think that on the opposite side, Variety is going to need to be careful about the Big D. He absolutely is going to have to make sure that he's playing this one carefully or he can get punished. Another thing I'm curious about is what's Aurora going to be doing at the start of this game? One of the one of the big threads for me in Season 6 is where do these supports go at the start of the games? What are they doing to get the most out of their out of their most value out of their time? And Aurora's the kind of player who was already doing weird stuff anyway. Yeah. So now that the door is wide open and he can be comfortable that Divios can hold his own in that matchup, we, we don't know what we're going to be seeing from him. He could be anywhere. It's true because Aurora and Divios share very similar god pools. They did. The Guardians, even Warriors Aurora can play from time to time, playing Fenrir since the very beginning of Smite competitive scene. So there's more flexibility now with Splice just having Divios back and on top of Divios coming back. That means that their openings are just wide open, knowing right. that he likes to lean on that dueling at level one. We've seen it so often at Worlds, how Splice was able to do that three on two opening and then have Divios teleport back to the soul lane. I wouldn't be surprised if we see it here today. You're so right. I mean, how much, I mean, they had to kind of prioritize their pick for solar or troll, it felt, when he was playing. Mm -hmm. Now that you have Divios in there, that opens up even their picks and bans to be a lot yeah. more flexible and difficult for Dignitas to read. So it's a lot of work on Biggie's shoulders as well. But what about Cyclone Spin? If these hunters are left alone, like we saw some yesterday, then which one of these two hunters with all that extra farm to have the bigger impact? I mean, Cyclone Spin's used to rotating in late and carrying. <laughs> it's difficult to really pinpoint what Cyclone Spin is going to do because at one game he'll play the Uller and he'll just try to like snowball you, right. try to full combo you, and then other games he'll play the late game Rom, the late game Shibalanke, the late game Freya. Freya not yeah. really prioritized yesterday in picks and bands, but we might see it here today. No, we absolutely could. You're right. Freya's one more that you got to make sure is on your radar. And you know, unfortunately, we didn't even really get a chance to talk about Moswell yet and how great he's been for this team, but fortunately, you'll still get to hear a bit from him. We got Moswell standing by for the interview. What's up, everybody? I'm here now with Splice's very own mid laner, Moswall. And first things first, Moswall, the squad's getting into the studios for their first set today. And I, I got to say, what's it like knowing that you guys are going to have Divios this go round? Feels pretty good. Really going to have to do it to him this time. So in the process of doing it to him, is the is the hand stance a part of the, of the pose? Are you just going to flex on him every single time that you get a kill? or? It is really important to have this hand stance, or you just can't kill him. Can't do it to him without it. No, not a possibility. Well, as as part of this as well, I, I got to go ahead and ask you, what is your strategy to do it to him from the mid lane position? Press four and live. Press four and live. I think you guys heard it here first. Go ahead and get back to you guys on the desk. 
Well, you know he had to do it to him, or at least he did in that situation. Good to hear from Oswald, and good to hear that they're in good spirits. Maybe a little bit, a little, get a little bit loose, having some fun before yeah. they go into this very, obviously very important set between these two. So, uh, so I'm glad to say they're still in good spirits. And I think that Taco is right to sort of hone in on what Dignitas or what Divios means being back to this roster. And when you're up against Dignitas, a team that's undefeated as yeah. well, you got to be in those high spirits because this is going to be probably your most difficult challenge in this split. A team that's four and zero right now. He, they're looking so strong during this house. So I think that if Spice come out with a victory today, I don't think they're worried about anything after that. Uh, no, I don't think so at all. But like you said, it's not going to be an easy task for them. We just went through how this Splice squad is stacked with talent, but so is this Dignitas squad. Yeah. We talked a little bit about the variety matchup, but my man Kivo Fred has been putting on a show. I've been so impressed with what he's been able to do from the jungle. I don't even know if impressed is the right word. At a certain point, you're just like expecting excellence from him, mm -hmm. and he always does it. So it just means so much for this team. Sino's got a tough job keeping up with him. And the difference between Sino and Kiva Fred is Kiva Fred will play these late game carries on the jungle roll, such as the Hun Bats, where Sino's playing like the Erlang Shen, the Naja, gods that can pop off in the early game and has that individual pick status, whereas Kiva Fred is also thinking about these team fights, having the Hun Bats available to him. And you got to think about Trix Tank as well, right? His performance yesterday was was insane. It really oh, was. Yeah. I mean, it's so we don't we don't give supports enough credit, and it can be so difficult sometimes to like you know find the highlight clip of what they did that was so nuts because maybe it was like a superb shell timing or like one wall that he put down on Terra that like blocked off an initiation, and that stuff can be hard to pick out and show you. But he's always doing that kind of stuff for this team. He's the he's like the engine, the motor that you can't see under the hood that's keeping the team moving. And heroin in the background, right? There. He's always just kind of following suit. He has his moments of greatness as yes, well. For sure. Had a difficult match yesterday against PK, dealing with Zeros' Jorman <laughs> Gunter, right. constantly world serpenting <laughs> in the back line. But I think, if anything, Dignitas learned a lot from that set. I don't think necessarily they'll play the Yorm in the mid lane, but I have seen Trix kind of flex that in the support position in rank from time to time. So it could be in their arsenal. That's a good point. The like uh, a wheelish Jorman Gunter combo, that yeah. was really a splice thing, right? It was a roar that brought it out along with Sino. So good thing Heroin got some reps in, right? Because it might be on the horizon here for him in this next game as well. So uh, we'll get a chance to hear from Dignitas, it sounds like now, because uh, they've got a big set coming up. We've got to make sure that they're in the right headspace too. It should be Coach Biggie that's standing by for the interview. Here now with Dignitas' very young coach, Biggie. And Biggie, Dignitas has seen so much success already in Season 6. What's the game plan to kind of keep things going here against Splice today? Uh, I think the main thing for us is we're taking a lot of risks in our draft and we're not afraid to lose. Like, especially the split, we don't care if we win or lose. We just want to keep taking risks in the draft. So that's what we've done so far against pretty much every team. And uh, Moswell had a couple of things to say about, you know, how he was going to do it to you guys. Do you have uh, any kind of input that you could add back to how you plan on doing it to, to Splice? Uh, no comment on that one. None whatsoever. Well, I, I know that one big thing that I've definitely seen from your team is that there seems to be a, a lot of focus around Cubo, Fred, and Horiwin definitely kind of just taking things off. Was the game plan initially to try and see mid and jungle uh, do best, or are you guys looking to maybe have a little bit of solo lane action today? Uh, I think it depends. Yesterday it was a lot about how Knights wanted to play. They wanted to play in the solo lane, so we kind of were slow to adapt, but eventually we got there and kind of hung on most of the time. I th it depends on the game for us. We don't really ha have, I think, a star. Like, in my opinion, we don't really have a star player. Like, I feel like everyone, and that's, that's the most surprising thing for me so far, is like, Trix is having amazing sets, Nate's popping off in like sets and carrying sets. Uh, and it's just a, a full team effort. All right. Well, it's been exciting watching you guys so far, and best of luck in your set against Splice today. Well, it's good to hear from Coach Biggie over there for Dignitas. And I think he's right. It has been a team effort for Dignitas. And, yeah. I, and, and it has been surprising for me. Really, it's been Heroin and how well he's stepped. That's been the surprise. I, I, I've said it multiple times. He was my question mark for this roster coming into the season. And he's turned into an exclamation point. My man has answered it every turn. And a difficult challenge for him yesterday against Pittsburgh Knights, oh, yeah. where they were heavily focusing him out. I think he went through the fire and the flames <laughs> yesterday. So the question remains, how is Splice going to kind of answer Heroin? 
Bowen or Daniel Thomas? Are they going to go for the same strategy that Pittsburgh Knights did, where they focus out that mid laner in team fights, or are they going to lean somewhere else? And knowing Sino specifically, I think it's going to be in the dual lane. I think that they're going to be focusing out, trying to get Psycho and spin ahead, probably get him a late game hyper carry god in that hunter role. That's a good point, right? Maybe yeah. try and get over there and make Ataraxia uncomfortable. We haven't seen as much of like this sitting on dual lane kind of as we thought. I mean, yeah. it, it, lately now, it's been hunters who are the, have the highest level in the game and getting all that gold and just having a free life. So hopefully someone like Sinu can come around and, and punish them a little bit if they're trying to have too much fun over there in that dual lane. But we're just about ready now for those picks and bans. Game number one between Splice and Dignitas just about to get underway. And the picks and bans, I, I keep saying it, has become more and more just an essential part of making sure you're able to win some games. I mean, Big even said they're taking risks in it because they know how important it is. And knowing that you're up against Splice, don't expect the same picks and bans between game one or even game three, right. regardless of what the scoreline is, if it's 2-0 or 1-1 at the end of the day, because both of these teams very innovative, looking to really flex what they're able to do so far. And Freya is open. It has been banned in the beginning parts of season six. It's not seeing it as often so far in this week, though. Interesting, isn't it, that Splice, his first pick, are the ones banning away the King Arthur? That's it, it, Normally, it's something that we see very specifically relegated to the second pick because you're so willing to take it. But it looks like Divio's uninterested and even Telegrapher that they're uninterested, and they'll happily take this Merlin instead. I don't know what they're practicing so far, Finch, but the fact that they are banning away soul laners means that Divio is, is here with a very wide variety of god pulls, speaking right. of variety that man on your screen. Wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if he goes for an early Bologna, because outside of Arthur and Achilles, Bologna has been seeing the most playing time outside of Camasots as well in that lane. That's right. I think I think that you're right. If King Arthur's gone, I would consider Achilles and Bologna to be those top two solo laners. But you're right. Now with Achilles banned away, Dignitas almost certainly should prioritize that Bologna. It would give them what's considered the, uh, the next highest priority solo laner and, and potentially a good chance. But also to your point, if they're banning away all these solo laners and they didn't take one with first yeah. pick, Divios has something in his pocket. That's true. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be a Guardian. If they lock in like Cerberus Freya, which has been their traditional season five go-to play, trying to really get Cyclone Spin ahead with all that magical penetration. But Dignitas taking away the Terra, a goddess that's had a lot of success in SPL and Splice has been able to run that. But this time it's Dig snatching it away first. And then it'll be the Jing Wei that comes along with Merlin, very likely there for Cyclone Spin. And then the Hades, that has to be for Divios, doesn't it? I mean, totally. you've been telling me kind of all season six that, that Hades can kind of bully in the solo lane. So busted, Finch. I'm so <laughs> excited for this Hades pick. You have no idea. And of course, who else would bring it out besides the Big D on the Hades? Now, knowing Moswell, you never really know. Right. At the end of the day, with Splice specifically, is this soul lane? Is this mid? Variety's got a little bit of a oh, smile. Look at his face. He's got to be thinking <laughs> about, like, oh no. This is Hades in the soul lane. Because right. like, the Terra is also a question mark. Like, where is this Terra going? Is that going to be for Trick Tank? Is that going to be the soul lane for Variety? When you are dealing with Divios that can be aggressive, that can be passive, you have to keep every option open. So the fact that Dignitas are second pick, that gives Variety a huge edge to kind of at least get the whole god list from Splice before he has to lock in his pick. That's right. And this Terra could be for him. But like you said, because the door's so open, they can always give that over to Trix Tank and then have variety. Maybe trying to go into something more aggressive to keep up with Hades. Or maybe he wants to play it passive. It's... It can be difficult to bully a Hades sometimes, so he has the door wide open on how he wants to play it as the Rata Tosker rounds out the first three picture dick. So from Heroin specifically against this Hades, I want to see Anubis. If, if it's Hades on Moswall? Doesn't matter. Oh, uh, just in general? Just in general. I want to <laughs> see the Anubis because it's kill or be killed at the end of the day for, uh, when you're dealing with Hades. Like, right. That's the play style normally in these team fights, and Anubis doesn't know better compared to any other guy. So I think that if you're looking for a way to melt the Hades during his ultimate, the Pillar of Agony, Anubis is probably your go-to option. That's right. He drops the Pillar of Agony, you drop the Death Gaze. Should be relatively simple for him. We'll see if that's going to be the call. Now we are looking at the man himself, Herwin, and what it is that he's considering to pick as these first bands have been the Erlong Shin and the Finrear, and then Spice took away the Afwash. That's interesting. Dignitas showing a little bit of attention towards Sino, it would mm. seem, and trying to limit some of his pool. He's very good on a lot of these picks, but hey, Najah's still out there. It is still out there. Najah wouldn't be a bad pick for Spice if you're looking for individual picks. And knowing that Merlin and Hades are locked in together, it's probably going to be Merlin in that soul lane, or sorry, in that mid lane, and Hades into that soul lane. I don't really expect Merlin to be there, knowing that 
when your co when your blink is down, it's another 23, 24 seconds until it comes back up. You can get heavily punished by the jungler. That's right. And it's probably the safest thing to ban when you're still not 100% sure where the Hades is going. Very likely, I think it's going to Divios. Yeah. But there is some flex potential there. So in a world where you're not 100% sure, you know that they still need something for Sino. So ban those things away. Yeah, it's a good look so far if you're Dignitas. And still have Ratatasker. That could also be for Variety. You never really know if that's, that's going to be for Kivo Fred. Why? but with this Amusin, Cobb, and Hachiman. So I'm assuming AMC mid for Hurrowind. Hachiman coming up for Ataraxia. Still a question mark if they want to run Terra there because Terra's not the greatest at level one in terms of deal. What is going on with Well, Splice? that's got to be Divios's then, right? But then, and then it is Hades mid. And but then, Haley. But then where's Merlin going? If it's Her Oh, you're right. If it's Hercules solo for Divios. It's Herc support then. That's what I'm thinking. Hades support? It could be. It definitely could be. I think it has to be, though, that they're trying to do the Hercules Jingwei duo lane and then Hades for Divius, right? That's, there's more kill potential if you run Herc in the duo lane right. because the way the passive works is as you're getting hit, you have more physical power. So when you're trying to trade blows, yes, put Hercules in that support position. Try to have the more aggressive 2v2 and dealing with what looks to be a Terra? Because it's Hopwa yes. Jungle. It's got to be Hopwa Jungle, Rat Solo, Terra Support from Dignitas with Hachiman dueling, AMC in mid. Both of these drafts are wild. They are. I just yes. want to get into the game. <laughs> I, I'm very excited for both of these drafts. So it's the double hunter competition with plenty of magical damage coming yeah. out for Dignitas based on this Hopwa. So they still have everything that they need in this composition, maybe a little bit squishier than normal, but that's about all I would say. I mean, th this is this is exactly what wow. you want. If you want to know what we meant when we said what what's missing when Solar Trolls there, not Divios, I think it's something like this. The Hades. E pick. Exactly. So very interesting from Splice. Let's just go ahead and get over to the casters. We'll let them talk a little bit about it and get us into the game. Thanks a lot, guys, on the desk. And, you know, when it comes down to it, Agar, I think absolutely uh, Hades in the hands of Divios, Hercules in the hands of Aurora. This is as classic Splice as it gets, baby. Exactly. And it's classic in the sense that it isn't classic at all for, for most other teams. And that's what Splice is really known for and where, and where they really excel. The, I love the Merlin pick in the mid lane. I think this is the exact type of god that Moswall can do very well with. Pele for, for Saito in the jungle, I think it's Munch! perfect. Munch! We were just talking about Munch. He's there in the video. That's amazing. That's we, so good. We we love Munch here at the SPL. Can I say that? Yeah, big, big fans of Munch. Munch, for those of you out of the loop, you should follow Coach Kabam on Twitter. He is Splice's coach, and Munch is the, maybe official, but for now, because I don't know, the unofficial mascot of Team Splice here. World champion dog right there. That is, Ladies yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. That's a champ. Munch number one. So it isn't Hebo in the jungle, which I think was a, was a, was a good guess. And that's where I would have put yes. this whole roster for Dignitas. Instead, it's going to be Hobo on the solo lane for Variety. And I like this a little bit less because you this gives Divios kill potential because Sino coming over can easily force that ultimate. And then as soon as that crushing wave is down, there's no shot for Variety to survive the Pillar of Agony. You do have the, you do have access to the Yellow River, but I think you're you're really onto a point where I just think Jungle Hebo is better than Solo Hebo. Uh, yeah. Divios on the Hades because of the life steal can act kind of bruisery. Think about Kamazots and how Kamazots can act kind of bruisery because he's got this massive sustain. Hades is going to heal himself and his teammates even if he gets lucky or smart about it. And I think that allows him to sort of play that tanky role, even though he's not a true tank. Hebo on the other side, he's a damage guy. I mean, even when he's in the jungle and I see a breastplate of valor or sometimes you see it in the mid lane, I don't like it. I want glass cannon Hebo. I'm very curious to see A, how how Variety builds this, and B, how it works out. Yeah, I mean, he does have Purification Beads, so he does have some survivability against Pillar of Agony should he not have his ultimate. I don't know. Well, y The thought is, Hades is going to give me a fairly free lane. I'm not going to be in too much trouble, and then we can take the fight from there. There's a fight over here by the right-hand Harpies. QO Fred able to get out. Nice, nice flank from Aurora. Well, that's going to be that. We continue our conversation about the solo mage. I just don't know what a tank Hebo brings. And with a Bancroft start, I think we're going to see Warriors Blessing damage Hebo. Because I don't know 
I just don't know what Emo would bring in the tank roll. Could be, could be something along the lines of what Divios is going for ultimately, which is that Warlock staff, an Love item it. that we don't really see very often. But if we're gonna see it, this is the time that you would see it. Uh, you, you, this is signaling I'm gonna sit in the lane for a long period of time, get my 100 stacks yeah. in this lane, and set myself up for success later on. Hades is a good character to grab stacks on. We'll be able to grab those pretty often. <clears throat> it, it will take a while to, to kind of grab this item. It's, it's expensive in and of itself. But at the end of the day, if you're playing a, a, a mage solo, or a tanky mage solo, or a guardian solo, it's kind of like the ideal item if you didn't have to spend so much gold and stack it up. The stats are ideal is kind of what I'm getting at here. Exactly. It just takes time. And, yeah. and time is something that Splice can probably afford to, to give up at this point because this is a team that throughout all of last season during their online split was one of those teams that went long in games more than any other in North America. The old Trifecta roster did a lot of going late, but, yep. but so did this one. They're, they're very comfortable in the way that they play in the later game, and, and that fits up against Dignitas' style, which is very similar to that. I mean, we saw how long their games were against Pittsburgh Knights yesterday, a 46-minute and then a 59-minute first two games of that best of five. So you know that both these teams are willing to take it into the later stages. Splice certainly have won a couple of games off those strategies. They won a championship off those strategies. So they obviously have a lot of fans. That said, Dignitas undefeated so far in our in our sixth season here over in the Smite Pro League. Very interesting. The poll that we ran before the game, four votes was the difference maker between Splice and Dignitas. So this is the the closest contested match as far as fandoms are concerned that we've seen. That's not four votes. I mean, it, I get it. I do. I mean, this is, these are the two teams that have that have been really, really impressive. Splice last year, of course, winning their world championship. You got to give them credit there. And then Dignitas has looked like the best team so far yeah. in North America or, or Europe because there's no difference <laughs> now. Uh, they've just looked like the best team so far here in Season 6. They're, they're sitting undefeated still. They've beaten Pittsburgh Knights. They've beaten Rival. Uh, they've they've got a good claim to being the best team currently, but you in order to be the best team currently, you have to beat the defending champs, and, and th this is their first opportunity to do so. Aurora's Hercules has been tough to deal with everywhere for years. In the mid lane is going to look for an attack. Herwin gets controlled, kicked, and Sino finds the last hit. We're out of Tasker, Cubo, Fred looking for a response. Aurora misses the lift, and so that will be that. First blood going the way of Splice. Great aggression there by Splice and just no hesitation by Sino. Recognizes that Hurrowind is really far forward, out of mana. He had his purification beads, but I like that Hurry holds on to them in that position. You're dead no matter what you beads from there. Volcanic Lightning just so good at closing that gap onto characters like AMC. Nowhere for Hurrowind to go. And Trick's Tank just can't peel for, for that level of dive coming from Splice. Yeah, a little bit rough there. Nice combination. And again, just as I'm talking about Aurora's prowess on the Hercules, he kind of just does it. I mean, this guy, there's no, this is one of those uh, cards on the table that, that I like to, everybody knows that Aurora has this Herc. He's playing it in ranked, he's playing it on stream, he's played it in the SPL, and he just crushes with it over and over again. And this sort of strategy where he's playing jungle two, uh, kind of just rotating around the map and doing what he can whenever he wants to, that's really, I think, conducive for the warrior type of strategy that Aurora brings. I also really like the way that Splice started this game, which is with Aurora in the solo lane, because Hades really does well when getting everybody, getting all the minion wave grouped up around him, and Aurora just showed up, used the two, brought the whole minion wave to him, and set him up for easy early lane pressure. It looks like Aurora actually just got the purification beads away from Hurwind again, nice. this time by use of his own blink. So the, the focus is, is pretty clear so far by Splice, and that's Bully, this immobile hunter in the mid lane. AMC, AMC has a lot going for him, but thinking back, you know, way back in time, he was definitely looked down on because no escape, no movement unless he's got the hive, and the hive's easy to kill. He's just easy to kill. That's why we don't play him. So many, so many quoted pros. And obviously people get better and you're able to move around, but that's exactly what's being exploited here. He can't jump, he can't run, he can't dash, he just buzzes around and especially in this early game before you're putting points into those hives especially before he had the boots now actually movement speed boots you know that's a really it's a, that's a ripe target especially if you're a, a type of character that's going to add displacement and push him even closer to the team like hercules is and pele as well is perfect for i mean yeah. all amc gets from hives is movement speed and what does pele have no trouble with getting 
movement speed. <laughs> Magma Rush does quite a good job of, of letting Pele keep up with anybody who's just running pretty quickly. This is a, this was a great counter pick by Splice to, in, in their identification of what they could do against a composition like this for Dignitas, I think, is really showing the, the experience of this team and Kabam, the coach, of course, in understanding what Dignitas is likely to go for because Dig has played a lot of sets so far. They're 4-0. Yeah. There's a lot that's, of tape. That's a lot. There's a lot of smite that you can watch Dignitas play in Season 6, and Splice has clearly done a pretty good job of looking at that tape and, and seeing what they can exploit. Right now, just off the first blood alone, Splice has found a, a quick... 1,000 gold lead. So they've started to separate themselves from Dignitas, although certainly nothing considerable just yet. Really just a little bit of action around these harpies when both players are able to meet. And those oracles are actually really, really interesting. Neither team is full-on committed, but there has been a couple of tussles. Aurora has Blink. If the team shifts to the right side, it won't be the opportunistic moment it seemed to be. Feels like Herwin's just going to be spending a lot of time right on here the on the tower line, especially for the next 21 seconds because that's when his purification beads will be back up and ready to go. But until then, can't really afford to be much further forward than this, even with someone like Cubo Fred by his side because there, there's not a whole lot that you can do to peel away a Pele who's blinking on top of you and then using that CC immune ultimate to keep the chase going. How's that hive place been? I like the one in the jungle and the one on the tower, but just in the middle lane, is that where is that uh kind of what you're supposed to do here with the mid AMC? Yeah, I mean it it you I don't know when Erwin placed it. Sometimes you're just placing them when you have the cooldown up and you're not too worried about it. Uh, maybe he, that was when he was under pressure in the mid lane and you just toss one up as fast as possible to get sure. that extra boost of movement speed. And if it distracts the opposition for even half a second, then it may have done you some good. It was already um, yeah, this one's already gone here. Yeah, it's not a not a big waste of his time or, or mana. He's got a he's got a mage's blessing, so he's getting that MP5 back. He's got Talaria boots, which is there for the MP5 as well as the extra movement speed. He he's not hurting too much for for mana at this point. So placing hives whenever you get them up is, is totally fine. Roar just rotating, taking a hive out, and going back into the lane. He really is just jungle two here, he's lagging a little bit behind. It's level seven. And on the Hercules, you do want to stay competitively level. Uh, a lot of what Herc does here in the support role is damage related. Although I think displacement is really what makes him so attractive. It's just, and I'm kind of simplifying here, but not really all that much. It's just hard. That's why we don't see more of it. It's just hard. It's a difficult god to, to balance in the support role because as you mentioned, you need to be doing some level of damage. As well as Hercules is kind of just a hard character because all of his damage is on one ability, that's Driving Strike. I mean, Excavate does a lot of damage too, but that's an ultimate that's kind of different. Of his regular abilities, Driving Strike is 80% of his usual damage, and it's also his escape. So yeah. you have to commit to the fight every time you're you're using it. And if you're not using it, then you're not really doing enough damage to be to be relevant in the engagement. And that's where the, the delicate balance usually comes from with Hercules. Yeah, the, the, the ranged pull is not always easy to hit, and then Especially in the support role, you want to use those kind of separately, not always for the pull-push combo, like when you see out of more aggressive uh, play styles looking for it. Aurora's been looking for the blink push, and then the team can capitalize, and then sometimes find a straggler with the two, or even a flanking character, and sort of invite them to the party as well. But a slower-paced game here than we're used to. We have seen some longer games, but they've been... Still still active, uh, especially around this 10-minute mark. But just one kill so far. Splice getting that in the mid lane off of some good CC from Moz, Wall, and Aurora. And Herwin just honestly a hair out of place, but that's the difference with AMC. This is what the, this composition is designed to do, though, from Splice, is let Divios... He's at 78 already. His, his Warlock staff, exactly. Once he hits 100, I, I'd imagine that it, there might be early rotations from Divios w once that is done. 20 stacks away from this position, you're going to end up with a lot of health and a, and a good amount of power as well. And then you end up with, looks like it's going to be a spirit robe for him. I suppose Mantle, while very expensive. Mantle's cute. Mantle would be kind of cool just because if everyone's around you and you get low, you stun them even longer in, yep. in, your, in your Pillar of Agony, though that's usually not that relevant because if they're in there and they're that close to you where they <laughs> they're can just stunned, they're die. probably dead anyways. Probably going to be a spirit robe. He doesn't need to build health, so he's just looking for outright protections at this point and, and relevant passives, and, and spirit robe and mantle both provide those. That warlock staff already competitive. You need about you need about 60 to 70 stacks before it hits 100 power, and that's where it really becomes an item. 
having 65 power in the early game, and again, this is why this works in the solo lane and not so much the mid lane, you spend all this gold to have 65 power. <laughs> and that's just so rough. Hades is is going to make minions explode and can kind of work with that. In the, and also, you're shoved over here in the solo, like I said. So, Mid lane, Warlock said. There's a reason we haven't seen this item for, for a long time, and it's a very specific strategy that we're seeing out of Divius and the boys. But finished now, in about 12-ish minutes. As you said, I'm going to be looking for these rotations and these big Hades plays, which... You know, you strip the beat so often with the Hercules and even some of the uh, the Moswell nonsense. Hades is gonna have a good day. The, this definitely has potential. I love the the early spear, the Magus for Moswell, and the and the Merlin Hades combo just seems really nutty. I mean, he's got so much AOE to, to follow up off of a good Hades alt, and and God forbid Trick Tank gets locked in there, and Moswell's already in fire stands and close enough to follow up because there is. No chance Trick Tank survives a pillar of, that, of agony, regardless of if he uses his ultimate or not. But Variety is going full damage now. I mean, it, it's Bancroft's boots, and now it's going to be a pen option. Yep. Could be a Divine Ruin is what I would expect to see because of the healing from Sino and Divios and Aurora. Um, I, I think that would be a really good look for him here. Trick Tank in some trouble. <clears throat> Running away. Miss and Aurora misses the flip. Got to agree. Variety needs to build or... I would like to see Variety build mid lane, jungle, just power Hebo, right? There's there's no difference outside of the Warrior start, uh, and, and that would be ideal because, like I said, I mean, tanky Hebo just doesn't do much. In response, Kivo Fred needs to kind of band together and, and go into more defensive build. That's why we see a Shillelagh, build, a Shillelagh coming. I expect to see a Void Shield maybe later on. Um, even something like Masamune, while still offensive, gives you a little bit of HP. Those are the options I want to see QO Fred go into a little bit to offset the fact that Divos will be able to kind of play hybrid frontline-y, whereas Variety certainly won't. So QO Fred needs to kind of pick up that slack because it's just trick strength so far. There, there isn't going to be a lot of frontline here for Dignitas, that's for sure. But they've, they've got enough damage to really – because – the, the way that Splice's composition is going to work is that Aurora's going to run at you, and Divios is going to try and come in late and play cleanup crew. And the way that you counteract that is just by having enough damage that Divios can never do it. Right. Is that even, even in those compositions where Hades can never kill anybody, he's threatening so much CC with that Pillar of Agony that you have to kind of respect it. But you can play it a different way and just go full damage like Dignitas have done. Well, the Gold Fury pulled, and Dignitas not going to take the bait. Trick Tank caught in the ultimate. That's going to force out his ultimate. Like you said, Terra goes down. Cyclone Spin with a hit off of the assist from Divios. Variety makes the rotation, cuts down the support. Variety still in trouble. Cyclone Spin hits him with the ult, and the basic will miss because of the ult. But Sino follows it up. Kill number three for Splice. Sino just sits there and waits and waits and waits and waits and goes, okay, now you're dead. And it blinks it with an easy volcanic lightning to chase down that crushing wave. Variety just makes no impact at all in that team fight in comparison to Divios, who found the ultimate, which set up that whole engagement. I mean, Variety does grab himself a kill, but he just gets traded out so quickly. Wow. Anoraxia once was there. Th that was a great play from Divios. He backed, teleported in right behind him, and then hit him with the auto attack Shroud of Darkness to get the fear. Uh, Anoraxia never even used a relic in that slot. Just got crushed. Heroin tries his best to seal away the Gold Fury, but just can't do it. Great play from Divios, making this Hades look impactful so far. And that's really that's really the the Divios effect, right? Just an incredible uh, an incredible mechanical play as well as having the the strategic wherewithal to tp behind the opposition we asked a lot of t a, a lot you know what what's the difference with splice with the sub and divios and well that's it just right there <laughs> he, he's looking good so far that's for sure yeah he's been waiting the composition working as designed for splice splice is a is a combo team you know i i think of a, a lot of teams i think of you know SK is a more early game team. I think of Pittsburgh Knights as a team fighting team. I think Splice is a combo team. Anytime you look at their five their, their five characters they've drafted, yeah. you could see some inherent broken synergy that <laughs> if it works, feels really, really unstoppable. You need and, to get five stars to align. Right, exactly. But, but Splice are so good at putting themselves in a position to where that's going to happen for them. I mean, it, it, they, they, pr they prep themselves on putting themselves in those sorts of positions and Hades Merlin is a great combo that, yeah. that just will eviscerate 
immobile frontliners. And Terra's not exactly immobile, but she's immobile enough that you can bait that dash and then still get it going in your favor. Fire Giant started here by Splice. Dignitas going to respond. Here's Variety using the ultimate. Touches Divio's not that big of a deal. There's the ult in response, and Variety's going to go down. Sino with the last hit. Trick Tank already at 40. Big knockup coming out from QO Fred. No follow up from Dignitas, though. Trick Tank makes it underneath the tower, so it's just a single kill. And now Splice can go right back towards whatever objective they want. I doubt it's going to be Fire Giant. It's probably going to be Pyromancer instead. But Variety had expended the Purification Beads in the last engagement, and that's why Splice was looking for the fight. They knew that Dignitas had a disadvantage in the Relic Department, and this, this composition's great at really exploiting that if you don't have them. Fire Giant started by Splice now. All five members are here. Sino still has an ult, as does Cyclone Spin. Divio's half HP coming to great confirm. Call. Nice job, and now the push forward on Trix. Team's going to play cautiously here, Aggro. It's a great call by Splice, and, and I, I don't I don't think there's any chance that Dignitas didn't know that was happening. Um, as soon as you see the enemies do a Pyromancer, and then you don't see them on the map again, they're on fire just about every time. And, and Dignitas was well aware of that, but Divios was in the right it was in right lane, zoning Cubo Fred a little bit, but Cubo's alt was already down. He's gonna have a tough time getting in there. Herwin's only level was only level 13 at the time, maybe level 14. He's, he can't walk in without Purification Beads to, to face check that. Yeah. That was just a, a well-wrestled Fire Giant that Dignitas never had a hope of defending. Smooth stuff and Splice. Really smooth Spice. stuff. And I liked uh, I liked the attention to detail. Can we see healing done, actually? I want to see if Divios has really been involved. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. Because Divios has been... Uh, it's usually after the fact. In the, in the middle of the team fights, he's not getting a lot of this. But right there, we're seeing... Aurora and Moswall kind of get picked up there. Five to one so far on the kills for Splice and Dig. Now Dignitas is really behind the eight ball. And, and they've only got one kill on the board. That's for Variety. But Variety is now way behind in effectiveness yeah. in comparison to Divio so far. Th this is just a position where Dignitas can really end up pushing these towers because Hurry is only level 15. Ataraxi is level 17, sure. But can he really get involved in these team fights and, and do enough? I mean, Cyclone's been level 19. There's just too much global XP and gold that Splice has earned over Dignitas. It, it, it's really showing. Variety from the back. He's going to get chased up by Divios. There's big damage. Now here comes everybody looking at the Hades. The ultimate's used. And a big hit from wow. Hercules as well. Hades lasts forever. And Moswell here to clean up taking care of Hurwind, the blink over the wall from Sino, and he's going to look for the end. No way Variety gets out of this one. Volcanic Lightning there, as is Cyclone Spin. Blink forward, in fact, from Aurora is able to keep the chase going on a Trix tank. Great shots Insane. coming from Cyclone Spin, and Aurora's right there with him. Divios goes a little bit too aggressive, but it requires Dignitas such an overcommit in order to kill him. He just gets so many prots in the Pillar of Agony, man. It's crazy how tanky he gets. It's, it's really insane. This pick has done well. And that's, you know, it's, it's interesting because you hit the nail on the head in what we've seen Hades, how the play is drawn up. Hades is supposed to play cleanup. But, you know, sometimes you've got to adapt and Hades, well, there, had to start it. So Moswell was able to clean up and just kind of follow suit. That was that combo you were talking about as well. The uh, the Hades just yeah, just put put them in a circle and I'll put all my damage on top. It's so absurd, man. I mean, because it's it's Blizzard that does a lot of damage plus Frostbolt. It's it's you're an arcane stance and then the Vortex does a million damage and keeps them locked in. Well, where, where your one does a ton of damage. And like I said, if you're ever in Fire Stance <laughs> and close enough, no one lifts. Just see you later. It, it is absurd how much damage Fire Stance does for Merlin. I love the build for Moswall. It, it's all pen, just. Get the tanks in that Hades ult and insta-kill them for it. There's only one tank, but it's working for him. You could make the argument that he's building a little bit too much pen because there's only one tank, but that's the game plan, is we're killing the tanks. And, and Splice show that that's a game plan they really like at Worlds, with Sino constantly Naja ulting the tanks, and he's doing it again here. Sino's going to get ulted this time around. Followed up, knock up and knock down. QO Fred answers, but nuts. Moswell right away takes him down. Divios versus Hades and Anoraxia in trouble. Beats too late. And Variety follows up with the water hands. A misplay here from Splice. It's cost them two lives. A one for two in Dignitas' favor. Dig is down 11K. And this is how they come back.
I really, I really do like Ataraxia's style this game, though, and just sit. I just want to sit in the back, use my Eagle Eye autos. Divios will eventually just stand still for me, and I can pepper him with shots. He goes for the Rage this time around, a build that we didn't see him go yesterday at all, which I was kind of surprised with, with how much he was being left alone. You can kind of build into this crit build. It's a little bit more expensive, and that's why we usually don't see it. This time around, he does get a little bit punished because Divios does end up going Thorns and has the Highland Nemean Lion. But that's not enough, I think, to, to make you really respect how much uh, damage Ataraxia can be putting out. The problem is, is that once Divios sticks that Pillar of Agony, he gets so many protections. I believe it's 100 prots at level 20, which he should be really close to being. Yeah, you, get, uh, you actually get 160. My goodness, I'm way off. He gets <laughs> 60 more prots than I thought. He gets 160 prots. 160 protection. That whole time. So I don't know I don't know if this crit build is exactly what Ataraxia needs because he's just not going to do enough damage. He's got too many prots. He's going to be max on fist prots during this. 160 how many? How many prots does Divios have right well, he's now? He's got the mantle. He's got the mantle to give him... He's got 194. So he's capped. Yeah. When he one... ults, he is capped yeah. on protection. Yeah, that's that's okay. What is going on? Nobody plays Hades. I don't get it, man. <laughs> he's so good. He's so good against certain compositions. He's never he's never an early pick god. I don't think you can you, you can never first pick Hades in my They mind. third picked him. They third picked him. That's because they already the Dignitas already locked in the Terra. And you only need one to and it needs to be a key linchpin, but Terra is. Here's the Terra focus from Divios, variety half health by the support Hercules. Still pushed out. Fire Giant being attacked, by the way. There's the big Hades ultimate. Moswall gonna follow up and kill Cubo Fred. It's just Hades versus the world. While Variety chases a roar down south. The rest of Splice gonna join the party up by Divios. And Cyclone spin with the Odi bow. Over the wall for two. Tricks tank. If Cyclone can find the shots, and he can, will be three. That's 13 on the kill column. And Splicer walking up mid. Man, Divios just keeps two carries busy the entire fight and then just dashes away at the exact right time and lets Sino and Cyclone and everyone else come in and clean up beautifully. Good play by Variety to at least get one and put Sino down to one health, but it won't matter. Splice is ending the game from here. And man, a, a zero, two, and eight carry wow. for Divios on this pick. Incredible. Highest player damage, his opponent on the Hebo, but different roles and different levels of impact. Sino and there's Big Divios right there. Fantastic play. I'm sure the team is glad to have him back. Yes, I, you can tell <laughs> they're, they're feeling good about where they are, and they should be. I think Sino played great on that on that Pele as well. The one critical fight by Gold Fury, his patience was really, really impressive and just waiting for that right opportunistic moment. But this is where Dignitas might have some trouble because we, we heard from you actually during their, their correspondence segment on Esports Weekly, which is every Wednesday at 4 p.m., where you can really tell that this team just doesn't know what to expect from Splice. And that's right. such a hard position to be in when you're looking across the way and you go, well, I don't know what they're going to pick next. I've got, I've got no idea. And what's also fun about that is, you know, the beauty of the best of five series is that, and we've heard it, I've heard a number of pros and coaches talk about this, where you bring out, you know, your pocket strats in like game two, game three, sure. game one, you just go, okay, let's play the stuff you know. The Hades solo came out game number one. Yeah, and now, and now Dignitas goes, wait, if that's the <laughs> regular stuff. What do they have in the bag if they're getting weird? Out here? Yeah, I mean, you never know. The real the real thing is is probably the splice doesn't have a normal comp, <laughs> and they're and they're all weird. But that doesn't make it any easier, honestly. Splice win this one in fantastic fashion. We'll reflect on it with John Finch on the desk. Man, there's nothing like seeing the world champs at full strength, Tully. Yeah. That was a treat to watch. Divios in the solo lane on the Hades. Was it just that simple? I mean, what did you see here that, that, that led to Splice being so successful over Dig just now? It wasn't just also Divios. It was also Aurora on this Hercules. Oh, because yeah. <laughs> when you're lacking that front line, you need it somewhere else. And Aurora loves to play that kind of aggressive Hercules style. And the build specifically from Divios is what really elevated him and his team fighting presence. Because of the Pillar of Agony buff last year, 
going from 100 uh, prats all the way up to 160 at level 20. That enables Divios to rush into this Warlock staff that we haven't seen really since like Season right. 1, Season 2 solo lane days, back when I used to play Finch. That's right. So when I saw the Hades, I like got nostalgic a little bit. Then I saw the build, I'm like even more nostalgic. And it made sense as to why he went even Mantle of Discord, third item. We were uh, talking with Kabam actually behind the scene how you're sitting in the Pillar of Agony, you're getting everybody low, you're going to get low as well, so you easily proc that Pillar of Agony into the Mantle of Discord stun. That's right, and then everyone's stunned inside your ultimate, and a Cyclone Spin gets the triple kill to round everything out. But it, it really just was so much patience, I think, from Splice that, that worked so well for them. I mean, think of this fight, it's around like the speed buff, where they're, they commit so much onto Divios, yes. and they do eventually kill him, and I mean around the enemy speed buff from their perspective, and they do eventually kill him, but it takes such a commitment that Sino is able to blink over the wall and do a bunch of damage. Cyclone Spin gets in there too. He did so much, he does so much for the team, Team. And and Kabam talked about it. We don't want to give too much away of what they were saying behind the scenes, but it's just different when you have Divios on your team. There's so much that he provides to them behind the scenes. You don't just see in the numbers that having him there is just so critical. I mean, getting Hades before the secondary ban phase. If they really wanted Hades, they didn't need to pick it in no. that spot at all. But they wanted to hide their other cards. They wanted to hide the Hercules and the Pele. And speaking of the Pele, the damage was just through the roof from Sino. His build doing a lot of damage at the beginning phases, going for the Crusher as opposed to any cooldown reduction, substituting that later with Blackthorns. And I wonder if maybe this Hebo in the solo lane was a little bit too much of Dignitas getting ahead of themselves. I don't know if this was quite the pick. We mm -hmm. talked about how it does have some nice spots for them in the matchup, and it did have an easy time laning. It felt like up against the Hades. It wasn't really under that much pressure. But once they started getting into the team fights, I don't know, Variety didn't seem like he could kind of get exactly where he wanted to be and do what he wanted to do in the fights, not like he would on a traditional solo lane. It's difficult for Variety because as a Habwa, you could poke out the Hades, but one that's going to be rushing a Warlock staff anyway, he's going to be playing passive, trying to get those stacks. Divio's finishing off Warlock staff at four minute mark getting all the hundred stacks at 12 minutes eventually getting boots and when you're not getting any sort of jungle pressure to shut down that Hades it becomes very easy to stack that item up so I understand the idea and thought process of Habwa but there just wasn't that synergy that you needed from Q of Fred playing that Ratatasker to lean on this soul lane a little bit more so the thing is Habwa needs to get a little bit too close mm -hmm. and it just didn't work out because that's kind of what Hades wants to do as well exactly he loves being kind of in that melee range and what it seemed like Variety was trying to default to was like, okay, I'm not going to have that easy of a time getting to the back line for like Cyclone and Moswall. So what if I just blow up whoever's in front of me? Maybe it's Divios, maybe it's Aurora. But eventually, that got too difficult. Remember in the very last team fight, Aurora was basically 1v1ing him, just zoning the hotball away. You will not be a part of this fight, my good sir. That's what Hercules wants to do, right? Taking yeah. that damage from the passive, increasing his physical power. A Habwa soul lane is still going to be a Habwa in general with a lower health pool compared to most other gods. So even damage from a support Hercules is enough to get variety out of the equation.